Hello everyone, my name is Zach Hata, and in this video I just want to share what I've been processing today. So, very recently I decided to take the plunge into healing my childhood trauma. I have been well aware of knowing that I needed to process my childhood trauma for a number of years now, but it was only really a certain amount, a certain recent events that basically have catalyzed me to realize now that actually, if I don't sort myself out now, then I'm going to miss out on a lot of opportunities in life in general, because I already have, like, through me not processing my childhood trauma up until this point in my life now, I've created a lot of pitfalls for myself along the way. I've, I haven't been able to come from that loving space as much as I could have, for example, because I always had that weight holding me down. I've essentially lived a lifetime of rejection. And this all stems from my childhood. So, what came up for me today was, I've been, I was processing, I, I was meditating, and I had this, I set the intention of spirit, please, and my guides, angelics, whatever, please help me to summon my triggers up so that I can process them. And so what I did was, I <laughs> I felt this really strong sensation in my in my navel, in my sacral chakra, and it's like just above your belly button or below your belly button. And yeah, it <laughs> I so it was very uncomfortable. So I put both my hands on on my na on my navel and just breathed into it and just sat with the feeling, the emotion, the sensation of it. Just sat with it complete unconditional presence and in doing so I then asked is there a memory that you wish to show me and then I just had this fragment of like my eight-year-old seven-year-old six-year-old self just running through the primary school playground in, in my shorts that I always used to wear and I just had this flashback of when someone essentially rejected me for wearing shorts in the middle of winter because I did I don't know why I was just I loved it I just loved wearing those shorts even when it was freezing cold but at the time I didn't realize how that kind of rejection affected me as a child you know like seven eight years old it's quite heavy and yeah I so I processed that I felt I faced that but then this other memory came up straight after and it was essentially this girl in the playground who had come up to me and she said you and your family are all ugly and like for no reason just came up and said it and and I remember at the time it hurt that really hurt because at that point in my life I had already had this kind of like ongoing kind of feeling of like, oh, my family's different, they don't fit in, I'm weird, I'm not worthy. And a lot of that was to do with, yeah, of course, my family was a bit different, like bikers and a bit hippie, just come out of the punk era kind of thing and just into that kind of scene and stuff. And at the time, as a young child, it was very traumatizing in a lot of ways to feel so different in society, like and what I believed was quote unquote normal. And so, yeah, here's this picture of little nine, 10 year old me. I'm probably a little bit older. I am a little bit older in this image <laughs> than, uh, than when I got told that me and my family were ugly. But so what I did was when, when I, when I experienced that, that memory in my mind, I was just, I, I went into first person, first person perspective and I can remember the girl stood there in the playground with her face and her saying that to me. And I just had the feeling come back over me as well of how that felt when she said it. And so I sat with that and I just, I froze time all around myself and I just sat there and was completely present with inside that first person perspective of my eight-year-old self and 
yeah, I just sat there and just processed and sat with the emotion until it settled, with breathing as well, in and out, and just letting that emotion be felt fully without trying to push it down, like I did it at the time. And yeah, I mean, no kid wants to be told that they're ugly. And I wasn't ugly. I was a bit overweight, but it was, I wasn't ugly. I was a beautiful boy, full of happiness and sunshine in general. <laughs> and yeah, it, and so when the, when the emotion had settled in the first person perspective, I then took myself out into my third person adult perspective, observing my younger self. And I asked him, and I was just completely there unconditionally, and I offered help, and I nourished him, and I comforted him, and told him, you're not ugly, and reinforced love into him. And what a shift, what a shift. And I asked him, how do you feel now? And he was like, getting better. And so I hugged him. I just embraced him and he was just so it really helped and I asked him do you want to stay here or do you want to go to the safe haven and he which is like a made-up place where the fragmented aspects of our inner child can we can take them for further healing if needed but he looked at me and he smiled and then that a sense of relief came over me and he said no I just I want to stay and he ran off across the playground happy and content and so I closed out of the memory and just instant healing <laughs> as if that fragment of myself had just come back into me it was so powerful and yeah, it's just amazing how these little things that occur in our childhood, these little parts of ourselves that get fragmented <laughs> as we go about our childhood where other people say and do things, for example, that kind of rejection or that kind of abuse. And it and at that kind of young age where we are particularly susceptible to it because we're still forming and we're still absorbing and and if we don't have a lot a lot of internal love at the time because of our circumstances because of what's going on at home and we don't feel that love within us it's very easy for us to be dragged down further because we're also a vibrational match to receiving that kind of rejection and abuse as well so we're gonna we're already a vibrational match to it so we'll receive more of it and it will bring us down further so the only way was love and it always is love is the cure <laughs> love is the cure and no Zach you're not ugly <laughs> And I can say that with such warmth in my heart now. And I just felt a massive shift within, so I'm really glad I could share this. I just wanted to share my experiences as I'm going through this process now. I'm probably going to do another video explaining why I'm doing this now. Like I've already kind of highlighted it at the start of this video, but this is a really big deal for me right now. It's a really important time in my life. It's now or never kind of thing. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. So yeah, thank you for watching and I'm glad that I've been able to share this so authentically in the way that I just have and just push past my own boundaries and fear of rejection because I've just got so much love, love within myself from these past days of just building up my love levels and transmuting all of this trapped childhood trauma into love turning the lead into gold, the dark into the light, the lack into the love. Yeah, good stuff. Thank you for watching and much love to you all and have a great day and happy solstice. Thank you. Bye.